I want to remind any speakers that they are to address the commission. This is not an opportunity to address the school board or the education association. So just as a reminder, all comments are made to the commissioner. Thank you. Hello, my name is Elaine Tiedemann. I think it's this opportunity to share my concerns with you. This fall, I will begin my 18th year teaching with our of the schools, currently teaching third grade. My husband will be here tonight. He's a high school teacher here at South who teaches English. He's been with us the district for 14 years. We also have three kids in the part of schools, and they have a 7th grader, 6th grader, and 1st grader. Over the course of my teaching years, we have experienced a growing lack of, growing lack of respect in the teaching career from the board and administrators. We are told we are professionals or experts in the classroom. We are told we make a difference. We are told we are valued. We are told that we have parents the most precious gift, their children. But these are just catchphrases. The actions of the board and administration speak louder than the words. We are not respected. We are told we are whiners, complainers. The letters are put in the files because we speak up on unsafe conditions. It is increasingly alarming that teachers are expected to walk such a fine line with little to no support from our district and can be so easily targeted. I speak first to the concerned parent. Last fall, our daughter was in a kindergarten classroom with several challenging and disruptive students and administration did not have a little to correct it. Only until parents started holding their kids from that school did something happen. Right before Thanksgiving, we petitioned to have our child attend a different school because of our concerns and the little that was being done to prevent further disruption in the classroom. Our daughter saw children throw whiteboards, jump on the tables, lash out at her teacher, destroy her classroom and other students' property. Her behavior began to change at home, becoming more emotional, argumentative, defiant. About the same time, another parent in her class shared with me similar concerns about her child. Our petition wasn't granted, but kept open because we were assured that a plan was not in place and an administration asked us to give it a chance, okay. which we did. But I continued to pray each day I sent her off to school that she would be safe, as with her classmates and teacher, that everyone would return home unharmed. I was scared, disgusted, and outraged. We pushed for answers as to why it took so long for our daughter's classroom to be safe, and today we have yet to receive an answer. This was my daughter's first year of school, and I've been a kindergarten teacher for 10 years, so I know the importance of, of the, that first year. And this is the kind of classroom atmosphere she was allowed, and they said that this was a classroom atmosphere FPS is allowing, and basically saying it's okay to have children lash on their nose with little to no consequences. All the, children, all the children in her classroom were not receiving a quality education when these disruptions occurred. I can't fathom why a district who claims to work with and for families allows such mistreatment of their own students and staff. I expect that when my child goes to school and there is a problem, that it will be dealt with in a timely manner. I expect her to receive her education and not be evacuated several times a day due to disruptive and unsafe behavior. I, along with the community, expect that when we send our children to school, that they will not be harmed due to a lack of response by administration. Those in my neighborhood are petitioning out of their neighborhood school because of this lack of response from our district. Some have chosen to move. They are not impressed and neither am I. The reaction of our board is troubling. They call to name the teachers as complainers and that no actions need to be taken because as the board states, disruptive students is something that has happened even back in the 70s. It's not that big of a deal. Say that to the parents I know who have endured problems this year. They won't be receptive to that thinking. Or to the teacher who was home bruised and scratched or to the staff member who suffered a stress-induced heart attack. Times have changed and safety in our schools is a huge deal. The general feeling is that staff are so replaceable that they do not care to provide safety for them or the students because they do not believe there is a problem. I ask you, how
How far does this have to go before action is taken? Let's be proactive, not reactive. As a teacher, or as teachers, we deserve to be safe during our jobs. Employees and their students deserve contract language that explicitly details how to report behaviors of disruptive students, consequences, and next steps in the process. Language that should be followed by all parties, board, principals, teachers, parents, students. It doesn't make sense that in a district this size, there's no cohesive procedure. Teachers are expected to teach to curriculum-based guides so students who move to other schools within the district are within the same area of the curriculum. We are expected to grade the same standards and assess the same. Shouldn't our district have a plan in place that is just as detailed and expected of their administration to follow to provide the same procedures when handling disruptive students? Now I know, we all know we'll have behavior problems. It's how the administration and the board responds to these behaviors to help us through this. Um, and training is a start. But if there's no policy, follow through, or support, then we will continue to be where we are now, with some following, some not. Now I've done training, I've done ongoing, I've done nurtured heart. It's a combination of all of these things that we need to look at. No one plan is going to make this work every day. Because as we know, no child wants to say every child can learn but not the same way, the same on the same day. We need the support from the administration. Support is key. In regards to our pay scale, the words of our board are true and they do appreciate us that we deserve a raise. By the end of the summer, I will finally have accomplished my goal of taking those last 30 credits to get to the end of the pay scale with my master's plus 45 credits. This took me two to four years to do, and now I may not even get a raise. All those classes were pertinent to what I do each and every school year. Our district wants the best, and they should have to expect to pay to keep the best. Any organization knows this. Our board goes to the increasing graduation rate. How does this happen? From high quality teachers who care and work diligently for the students to be successful. Our district will lose this momentum if teachers are not paid accordingly. It's a cause and effect idea. Lack of quality pay, people will leave. Qualified advocates won't even bother applying. Will be a stepping stone for young teachers and in the long run, our students will lose. Our community will lose amazing teachers. Imagine this, your child works so hard on extra credit to continue to maintain a 4.0 to get that scholarship into their dream college, or another studies hard to pass a class in order to be able to graduate. These students work tirelessly all year to be told, at the very end, sorry, I changed my mind, but I really appreciate the hard work you do. This is what's happening to teachers and staff in the Fargo District, and it is unfortunate. We deserve to keep our matrix and continue to attract quality professionals to teach the students in Fargo. Our board makes many choices to keep the district running, and one of those has to be to increase its employee salaries using the matrix. Finally, as a teacher in the district, I want the option to have my daughter attend the school where I teach. The board says this would be unacceptable. My neighbors think it's just fine. Actually, they can't believe that I have to go through the same process to have my child at the school I work at. It would just make so much sense. I am a taxpayer for Fargo. My neighbors are too, and they don't take issue with it, so why should the board? This should happen because it benefits both parties, the school and the employee. I don't have to worry about daycare pickup, can arrive earlier, stay longer, and or attend, can attend my daughter's school functions and not put additional strain in the sub substitute system. Providing perk for your employees will make them go the extra mile. I know it will for me. If we are as appreciated as we so often hear, why wouldn't you want to have a better relationship with your employees and work together to continue to maintain the quality of education that community and Fargo has come to expect? Why wouldn't you want to say to the community, we appreciate the hard work our teachers do each and every day by offering a pay raise using the matrix system and providing safe working and learning conditions? Thank you. Thank you. Can we mute this microphone on this phone? Whoever is on the conference phone, mute all their phone because it's overriding and disturbing the hearing at this time. So I'd like to shut that down if we could.
I will be acceptable as soon as everybody in attendance has their opportunity to speak. If we have another one online, I will accept it at that time. But I cannot have any more interference in the area. Yeah, we just removed that microphone. 